Hi, welcome to Aussie Kicks. On today's show, super excited for this one. We're doing the next series, if you will, in the Noob Goes Racing. And it's gonna be with this. Yes, you voted about a month or so ago, maybe two months now. You voted on what car I should get next for the Noob Goes Racing. And I was very surprised this is what you wanted to see. So uh, big thanks to Rochester RC for supplying this car for me, as uh, without having them on board, this Noob Goes Racing series would probably be the most expensive series that I do because it soon racks up but I have a plan in this episode we're going to unbox it look at what you get in the box as I've never had a modern buggy the most modern thing that I've got in the collection is a Schumacher K1 Aero and I think that's a good 10 years old now, something like that. So this is the latest and greatest from Team Associated. Now this has been out for just over a year now, April 22, I think it came out. So maybe there'll be a newer version of this in the next few months or so. And I'm a bit late to the party with this one, but currently this is the best that they do. And people seem to really rave about this. Now the plan is this, and I think it's a really good one. I think you're gonna like this one. Now I've got my Cougar Classic that's highly modified and all the electronics that I've got in that, I'm going to keep that is going to stay exactly as it is I'm not going to rob things out of that to put into this so you can see it's going to get expensive but basically I'm going to kick off by putting the identical electronics in this that are in my Cougar Classic so we've got a Reef Servo 299 low profile servo got to get one of those the Hobbywing X210 just stock G2.1 uh, motor which is 10.5 turn they do a combination combo sorry so you get the g3 esc with it so i'm going to get one of those that's around about a hundred odd pound then i'm going to get the exact same receiver which is the fly sky fgr 4s version 2 receiver as well so that it's got exactly the same in this as it is in my cougar why am i doing it like that well I go racing on a Friday night every two weeks and I can get into two classes so I can race this and at the same time I can race my Cougar Classic as I thought it'd be really cool to actually have the times and what my lap times are and what my uh, positions are versus a totally modern versus a vintage one using the same electronics, same driver, same track at the same time. Well, you know, like five minutes later so i thought that'd be really interesting to see just how different and how much faster a modern buggy is versus an old one then later on what we'll do is i'll use those electronics in other projects we will upgrade the electronics in this to then see whether going to more expensive electronics can make my time any faster so i thought that'd be quite cool as well now just like the cougar classic there's loads of potential upgrades for this as well so the first thing I'm going to do is build it up pretty much stock from the kit, apart from changing the bearings out. Now, there's a few little upgrades that will probably come reasonably quick once I've started to set some times, like the steering. One thing that you guys always recommend is upgrading the steering on this. Also, there seems to be a bit of an if around the suspension, the actual shock internals having two holes instead of three, changing those, because apparently if you do it stock, it doesn't really work very well. So we've got to sort that out. Now I'm thinking whether it's worth getting the short D version chassis, which makes it a shorter wheelbase, especially on a carpet that's quite a technical track, might be worth doing. But then I'm going to upgrade to a full chassis swap, which comes from wheel speed, do a conversion kit. So I've managed to get my hands on one of those. So that'll be coming, but that's going to be down the line. The idea is to do the upgrades gently. We're not just going to throw tons on. We're going to drive it and then see if these upgrades really make any difference. So that's the plan. Uh, another thing I'm going to do very different to what you've probably seen on the YouTube about this car. I don't like these bodies. So I'm going to retrofit a vintage body. I'm going to find one that's going to work with this and then we're going to do it. Also, I thought it'd be cool to actually go and race it with an old body and the new one. Is it really slower with an old vintage body on it than the new ones? Does it perform better with the cab forward? I don't know. I'm not sold on whether it makes a great deal of difference, but hey, apparently it does. So we're going to find out. So there's lots of really cool stuff 
coming for this one and I'm really excited and obviously couldn't have done it without Rochester RC as you can imagine this is going to get pretty expensive so as a massive thank you they've given 5% for you on everything on Rochester RC as well as free shipping so head over there and uh, on checkout type in RC Kicks as the coupon code and you can save yourself a few quid on your next RC purchase Anyway, let's unbox it, look at see what you get for all that money, and then in the next episode, we're gonna build it. Well, let's unbox it and take a look at what you get for all that money. Now, I haven't built a modern version of an RC for a while, and this is gonna be a whole new kind of ball game for me, so I'm really interested to see how it goes together. So, box-wise, very small. Now, I'm guessing it says bag 10, Bag eight, is it every? Is it a single step like Schumacher does or do you just lay them all out? I don't know, we'll have to look at the manual. So that's the battery cover. Apparently people don't really like this one. There is some upgrades you can get for it. So we'll have to look at that. But for now, I'll start with the basic one and then we'll see about upgrading it. Now there's lots of cool upgrades for this available. So there's all the turnbuckles. So obviously later on we could probably upgrade those to titanium as well and then change all these to fixed uh, ball cups for racing so they don't pop off like my Cougar does. The arms. Now I did hear that you can actually turn the arms around uh, the rear ones can be flipped over so you can make the wheelbase a little bit shorter as well apparently. Also, these are the pill, uh, what they're called, pill uh, locations, so you can actually set the toe in and toe out for the rear, but apparently, from what I've read, that you can get a different one because you can't adjust the toe in enough or toe out enough, something I saw online, so we'll have to look at that as an upgrade down the line, but this is a whole new thing for me, I've never had any of this kind of pill version where you put it in and you can change the camber using those so that's quite interesting uh, you get all the oils you get a 30 weight we get a what's the other one we get I can't can't see it 35 30 and a oh the diff one must be the 5000 silicon fluid oh cool and we get some molly grease by the look of it bearings now apparently the bearings in these aren't that great so i've got my own bearings so we will swap them out uh, i'll probably end up changing them to ceramic as well like i did on my um cougar classic and then we've got the steering the steering is another one that people say that if you crash a lot like me then uh, upgrading this to the alloy one is probably one of the first things we'll do so we're going to run it stock and then we'll start upgrading it down the line but i'll do the upgrades more gradually i won't uh, just throw everything on in one video but there's quite a lot we can do with this one then you've got the drive shafts and the rear hubs by the look of it uh alloy hexes and then what have we got in here what's this front uprights and the front uh, carriers by the look of it and a few other random bits slipper clutch a few more blue bling some carbon towers and the diff housing cover rear spoiler so i'm really looking forward to building this one i must admit it's very different the body i will cut this out and i will paint it up but we'll probably change it to a vintage one i've got to try and find something that's going to fit this kind of uh size so we'll just have to uh, see what we can find but luckily i've got quite a few bodies for vintage stuff so hopefully we can find something that's going to work as i'm really interested to see does this actually make the car drive any better ah, i don't think so then we've got the chassis so this is a longer chassis the dirt one like i said in the video earlier is shorter so we'll probably try this one first and then maybe i'll go for the shorter one i looked up the prices of this and it's like 70 70 odd pound to 80 pounds so uh, but maybe we'll try the shorter one first before we then change the whole chassis to see uh, maybe the shorter one is a better way to go on the track that i run out run at because it's much more technical and a lot smaller then we get the shock houses 13 millimeters which is up from 12 from previous versions now i don't have many uh, sh uh springs for this now being it's 13 the springs aren't interchangeable with the other ones so i'll maybe have to get a few more springs so i can dial it in later on 
this is a big step up for me from the whole dialing in the car. So this is going to be quite complicated for me. So I'm probably going to need quite a bit of advice on this one. Uh, yep. Then we've got the rear wing and there's a front wing on this one as well, which is really interesting. Do you get two? Oh, that's good because I'm tempted to put one of these on my Cougar. So uh, maybe I'll put one on the Cougar and one on this one and then the spoiler. Then we've got the diff. Obviously, we've got <laughs> we've got uh, metal gears. So there we go. Uh, oil diff. So it's got a gasket. So, yeah, you can fill it full of oil, which is good. And then we've got some weights. 30 gram weights for the electronics. Then we've got the rear arms, the side parts, and more carbon, gold wing. So yeah, it looks all right, actually. And then last but not least, what's this, the actual, what have we got here? So we've got some stickers and the manual itself. I'm gonna open it up and just uh, have a look at the manual. Just wanna see the steps. So, so how does it? Okay, so bag one, bag one, step two, bag one, step three. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's kind of like along the Schumacher ones where you have bag two, bag two, and then bag, then it changes. Okay, so you basically they've grouped it. So the first sort of 20 steps are all sort of like bag one, bag two, then bag, so there's like multiple steps per bag, which is, yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of like Schumacher, but kind of not. So really interesting, and I'll be interested to see how it goes together as well. So in the next episode, we're going to be building it. I just need to order a lot of parts, like electronics. I better get a move on.